of videos on the internet that talk about how to create threads and how to use uh, different uh, methods to create uh, threaded bolts and screws. But um, I haven't seen uh, too many examples how to create a parametric screw and the fundamentals of what that looks like, um, how to uh, build one that adheres to industry standards. So I thought I would put this together. I spent uh, several days, intensive hours, uh, creating this screw, which uh, um, you can see here. This is um, uh, this is what we're going to be walking through, and uh, it has several parameters that uh, allow me to control um, the dimensions. So, for instance, I can make this into a quarter inch twenty by putting in a quarter and 20 for the thread count or TPI, and boom, we have a quarter inch 20. Um, and I compare this to um, a screw that uh, design that came from uh, McMaster Car and uh, they're identical. Um, I have not tested this out in terms of manufacturing or producing it, so consider this more of a uh, introduction to the techniques that you will learn, um, such as how to uh, use the uh, coil tool and how to create the tolerance and the, the different uh, crevices that um, the screw requires. So let's start first by looking at the, um, the, the specifications of a screw. Yes, I know this is not the most exciting thing in the world. Um, I'll uh, put a link to this site. Um, there is a uniform standard for thread design. Uh, originally, there was a U.S. standard, the British standard. They were kind of consolidated into the Unified Thread Standard, the UTS. Uh, the problem is that uh, you have to spend 50 bucks to buy the whole specs, but if you do some search on the Internet, you'll find uh, sites that um, go into details like this one, which I really liked. And when you look at this diagram, it looks a little daunting, but it's not that difficult. Um, the gray part represents an external thread, so a screw or bolt, and an internal thread, um, which would be the, the nut. Um, I'm going to go through what this um, looks like you know, when you're designing uh, the thread and bolt, which is the part we're going to walk through. So if you look at this, the three key dimensions, really two are the diameter, the major diameter, and the minimum uh, diameter. The major diameter is what you measure when you take calipers to a screw, to a bolt, and you use the flat side, and you measure from edge to edge the diameter of the screw. Not you, And you don't do this at the neck, you do this at the thread area. And uh, for instance, a quarter inch screw would measure a quarter inch in diameter. The D minimum represents the shallow. So if you took the, um, the the thin part of your calipers and went in between the crevices, you would get that D minimum. And what I was struggling with was how do you design it and what is the height of the teeth? Uh, it's one thing to know how to do the coil to, to generate the teeth uh, using the square generator. It's another to, uh, to know what exactly the parameters are of the specs. And then if you look at the right side, um, you'll see the different height parameters. So um, really when you're generating a, 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 a triangular uh, tooth pattern, you are going underneath the surface of your screw, that's this bottom line here represented by D-min, um, and you're building that, that triangle into the body of your, your bolt. And um, same, similarly, you're also cropping or uh, chamfering the, the top of the screw to give it some clearance, some, some tolerance. These, uh, these represent kind of, these all uh, height measurements represented by H. Um, there's a formula I'm going to show you in a second, but um, this gives you the proportions. So you trim it at around H, an eighth of this H height, which is measured from top to the bottom of the triangle. Um, you trim it, so you trim about an eighth of an inch. The height of the teeth is roughly five, well, exactly five uh, eighths of uh, the H, and the uh, amount of uh, clipping that occurs is about a quarter, uh, a quarter of that H. And uh, P represents the, the pitch, or the distance between each thread, which is essentially the inverse of threads per inch, or TPI. So if you're 20 uh, TPI, then P is 1 over 20. And the angle that these triangles have to uh, result in is a 60 degree angle. So with that, you really have everything that you need. Oh, and also this width, this P over 4, 
is going to be very helpful when we're uh, going into the details of how to create this in uh, Fusion 360. Uh, so they, they give you formulas here. So for instance, um, H can be calculated from P. Remember, H is the height. So essentially, the ratio of the height is based on the, the pitch. The, the bigger the, the, the pitch or kind of more coarse the, the pitch is for the screw, the, the higher the teeth um, have to be. Um, and you see this relationship. Um, if you put into Excel square root 3 over 2, you can get the really long version of 0.866, and you'll see that that's what I use. Another um, thing that you'll see here is that you can calculate D min from D max. By the way, I didn't use the DP. You notice that there's a DP measurement here. Um, I, didn't, uh, I didn't find that I needed to use that. Um, it kind of gives you kind of the, the midpoint uh, for, for the height. But D min can be calculated. There's a simplification here. You can take D major minus 1.0, whatever this number, times the pitch. So if the pitch is 1 over 20, because it's a 20 TPI, and it's a, tw uh, it's a quarter inch, then a quarter inch minus this number times the, the pitch gives you what the D min is. And that allows you, essentially, if you think about D min, D min really is going to be the cylinder on top of which we're going to build our screw. That's the diameter of that cylinder, and then the, to the, the tooth pattern is going to dig into um, that cylinder, and it's going to go outside, extrude, all the way up to this uh, 5 8 five eighths of an H measurement. All right, so with that, we have everything we need. This, the table that they included here, um, it, it's really more for re reference. It's uh, not going to be as helpful as the uh, formulas that you saw, but you can see that a quarter-inch um, bolt which is 0.25 of an inch, and which is also 6.35 millimeters, is typically has three different courses, uh, uh, three different thread courses. You have a, a course at uh, 20 TPI, and a fine at 28, and an extra fine at 32. This is really just more of the industry standards for, for uh, course, uh, coarseness of the threads. And you can uh, see the different numbered uh, values that are less than a quarter inch, so a number eight, uh, etc. So that's all that we really need in order to start uh, building our parametric screw. Let's switch over to Fusion 360. I'm going to move my timeline um, back to the beginning of uh, my design. Yeah, you can ignore this error, the little chamfer error, and come one of the final phases, but uh, we'll, I'll, I'll fix that shortly. So I'm going to double click in here, and you'll see that what I, what I did is, first of all, I created the most important parameter um, in, in my uh, parameter list, which is the uh, TPI and the thread D major. Remember, the, these are my user parameters. So thread D major is the, the, the key to the dimension of your bolt, quarter inch, etc. So I created the, that parameter. And I also uh, have a screw length parameter so that I can dynamically create a one inch screw or two, two inch screw or one and a half inch length. TPI is the third uh, most important parameter here. And then everything else here is calculated. So you remember that H formula? Remember when we looked at the uh, that page, there was a formula for calculating H, right? It was 0.866 times the pitch. Um, so um, here you go, 0.866, and this is the, the real long number, times P, the pitch, which is one over TPI. So this number, instead of multiplying by P and develop the dividing by TPI, now we have a, a constant parameter for H. Uh, I could have used P in that formula, I'm now realizing. And then there's the calculation for uh, thread D min. If you remember, that is going to be the cylinder diameter that we're going to extrude in order to make the, the base of the bolt. And again, the, that was the formula that was in our page. Right? Thread D min. Right over here is this calculation. So um, we'll, with these few parameters, we have everything that we need. The first thing I did is I set up uh, four circles with all the key um, measurements. The, the base one is the thread D major. It's this second one. The top one is the top of the tooth of the teeth, right? So that is essentially the, the, the um, the place where the triangle will end. So if I go back to the diagram, 
Um, it is the location of the top of this tooth right over here, which is about an eighth of an inch above where the, the uh, thread um, ends, and which is five eighths plus one eighth, six eighths from the cylinder distance. So the distance between the, the cylinder, the, the base of our vault to the top of the triangle is six eighths. So let's go back. Um, um, first of all, we have the dimensions of the of this outer um, layer. And by the way, the reason I'm divided by two is because that uh, this uh, this gives me um, that that distance e that's listed here is essentially one half of the distance uh, because you, this goes around the entire vault. So you have to multiply by two. So what I'm doing is I'm uh, offsetting. One eighth of an inch plus twice, and that gives me this either outer diameter for for the triangle. And the third is oops, let's cancel that. Third is the D min. Remember, this is the, our base um, cylinder for the bolt. And then there is the bottom measurement, which is um, where the triangle digs into um, the, the the bolt body. So with this, these four, these four are equivalent to number one, the bottom, number two, the, the base, the cylinder body, number three, the top of the threads, number four, the top of the triangle. Now, um, now that we have that, the next thing that I do is um, create, let's see, uh, create an extrusion. So this extrusion is um, essentially from that uh, um, that base that we set. So if I go and edit this extrusion, you will see that I am using that base, the, the third um, circle that we, we looked at. And then after creating that base, I'm ready to do some manipulation. So um, uh, one of the things that um, you see here um, after um, uh, what you call it uh, after the um, after creating the base is I'm doing a little chamfer at the end, and then comes the real secret here. It's creating the coil, and this is where it gets a little complicated. But um, bear with me because. Um, I'll show you how I figured out these numbers. And I also did a, a, a test at some point. I was running in lines and looking at the cross-section analysis to see that the, the result really sits in the right place. Um, so let me see. I might have uh, some of these lines. If not, thread key markers. Yeah, you can see the top of the triangle is at the top of our outer circle. Right, and uh, we're going to be trimming it down to the, the second layer, and uh, then you see that our the, the the bottom two circles. The first one is the body that we built, and the next one is where the teeth end. And if I change this to new body, you can see exactly how these teeth are aligned to to the bottom circle. Um, so the, these are the measurements, and I'm going to post these into the comments, but uh, I used uh, the diameter and all of the other calculations um, to create this uh, using a triangular uh, pattern, um, putting this on center, and then all of these offsets position it precisely the way that we, need the, we needed this to, to occur. And by the way, the section size, which is essentially the height from the top to the bottom, is thread H. Remember, that's a calculated value that came from the article over here. So next, we're going to um, see all of the manipulation that occurs in order to uh, turn this into the finished screw. Okay, so um, I got rid of that error that um, I had earlier. It was from uh, one of the previous iterations. Then you notice that the slight difference, you'll see that's really clean um, clearance here at the bottom of the pit for the thread. So let's continue with where we were before. The next step is going to create this uh, chamfer, so uh, this fillet. So if you notice, this is uh, where we started, right? We had the body of the cylinder with all the measurements being accurate. And then um, I'm introducing here the fillet, and um, it's really simple. All I did was to select 
the face that we had um, early before. So I'll and and I'm by the way I'm using a calculation. I'm just taking the thread pitch, which you notice in the design. Thread pitch is also used to determine kind of the the width of that the channel between the teeth once it's uh, cropped. So I I, I used um, a calculation. I, I picked myself. Um, P over 6 in order to figure out how much um, fillet I wanted. And let me delete this so I can show you how I did it. I just selected the surface um, and uh, then selected this, uh, what was it, uh, thread pitch over 6. And that's it. Creates a, a beautiful clearance, and you might play around with it if you need more or less. And um, then the next steps um, one was to create this um, uh, this extrusion. So this is really interesting. What what I did is remember that we had a, um, a sorry. <laughs> Remember that uh, in that uh, those multiple circles, we had that outer rim. This outer rim defines the top of that um, the, the top of the triangle. That's what the the outer circle represents the top of the triangle shape that we looped around, and the second one represents where we're doing the cropping. Right? It represents this layer here, which is an eighth of an inch. So all I did is take that, extrude it, and use that in a cut operation to give me that uh, chamfering uh, that I'm looking for. So from here, everything else is really cosmetic. Um, one of the next things that I did is, um, um, let's see, I am looking at a, um, a little diagram that I did here using the, the bottom, because if you notice, every screw has a little of a tapering at the bottom, the first two teeth. So I'm taking advantage of the parameters that I already have. The first one is I'm going from the, the, the base uh, after a little uh, filler here, and I'm measuring a distance of two times the pitch, which means that I'm going two threads in, that measurement puts me exactly two threads in, and then in terms of the height, I'm uh, using this height measurement, which is the 5 eighths. Why 5 eighths? Because, remember, 5 eighths is the, the, the distance um, between the, this bottom um, and the top of the tooth. In order to get myself cleared um, over the uh, top of the, to the the thread, and then I'm adding some arbitrary distance. This um, sorry, this uh, measurement, uh, another um, thread H, to create this trapeze that I can then lay the round or um, loop around the thread to uh, create this uh, this chamfering. So now that um, we have this built, I can do a revolve. Let me show you how this revolve works. Now this revolve creates this little cutting action that gives me that the trimming at the, the base. And this becomes really cool because you could go back and if you could if you wanted this to be three or four threads long, you can just change this and make the length measurement to be let's say four times thread P, and now the result is being, trimming the first four threads. So that's, that's pretty neat. Um, you can play around with this. And then the rest of the steps um, are just to design the, the head of the square. I didn't put too much attention into how to design this. I just made some something that looked uh, visually appealing to me and did uh, uh, some yeah, revolve, and the result is... Oh, I have to finish this sketch. And the result is this. And then I added a little crosshatch um, using an offset sketch plane. I created the crosshatch for a Phillips. But again, the, this is not, uh, I'm sure there's a whole standard just for Phillips um, screwdriver heads. And uh, But the end result is, I think, it's phenomenal. It is, uh, seems to be very close to the design specs. I'm going to try printing this out, but hopefully 
Um, what you've picked up from this is some techniques, um, how to look at the references, how to use the parameters in order to dynamically make changes, and uh, I just applied um, some material to this, press A, and then I use the stainless steel to apply the material, and then you can go and uh, add a little positioning to make it uh, look pretty neat. And then go into the rendering screen, and I created a couple of neat renders, one of which probably got you to this uh, to this video in the first place. So I'm hoping this um, this was helpful to you. Um, send me your comments, questions um, here below, and uh, looking forward to seeing you again. Thanks for joining.